Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Tactical Talks. So, today I wanted to talk to you guys about, obviously, guns. Um, we talk about guns a lot on this channel, or during this segment on this channel. But what I wanted to talk about was what guns I carry with me on duty. Um, a lot of people make a big deal of, you know, old cops carrying ARs and stuff like that. And yes, we do carry ARs. Some of us do. Some of us carry shotguns. Um, as you'll see in this video, some of us carry both. Um, and I'll explain why I carry both. And everybody knows we have a pistol on us at all times, but what people don't realize is sometimes one pistol isn't enough. And I'll get to what I mean by that here in a second. Um, first off, every gun that I'm going to be showing you guys has been cleared. There are magazines in them, but there is not around in the chamber. So we're just going to follow all our safety rules and be safe about that. The first gun that we're going to talk about is the gun that I carry... On my belt, um, you guys have seen this gun before. This is just a Glock 22. We carry Glock 22 Gen 4s. I have the Streamlight TLR uh, 1 HL on the front of that gun there. This is uh, chambered in 40. Um, 15 rounds. I keep one in the chamber as I'm while I'm on patrol. Like I said, there's not one in the chamber right now. But this is what I carry on me on patrol. This is my primary gun. Now... The reason I point this out as my primary gun is because I've talked about this gun, this other gun, in other videos, and this is my backup gun. This is, this one's a little brother. So this is a Glock 27, um, also chambered in 40. This thing has a Glock 23 magazine in it. I've talked about that in other videos, so check that out if you guys want to learn more about this gun. But this gun, when I take this magazine out of the 27, and I take the magazine out of the 22, it accepts these magazines. So all the extra magazines that I have on my belt, on my vest, in my vehicle, in my uh, in my go bag, stuff like that, for whatever reason, if my primary gun malfunctions and I can't clear a jam or there's a bigger catastrophic issue with this gun, I can roll to this one and, and use that... Um, the same magazine, same ammunition without an issue. So this is the backup gun. This one primarily stays in my vehicle. I don't necessarily carry this one on me. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Like I said, I do carry the 22 on me um, all the time. So with those two guns, I'll, I'll get into kind of where this sits. So this one actually sits in my passenger seat upside down over here like this. So when I'm in my vehicle, I don't know if you guys have ever tried, and I'll cover it better in a, in a more in-depth video, but I don't know if any of you have ever carried a gun on your hip outside the waistband while you're in a vehicle and you're trying to draw that gun. Depending on how much gear and stuff you have on, it's a little more difficult. It's not impossible. It can happen. For me, it takes a little bit of moving around because of the way my outer vest sits, but it's a little bit harder. So it's easier for me, as this gun is sitting across, for me to not have to mess with gear, everything I can stay here. I can reach my hand over to the passenger seat and I get a grip over here, comes out of the holster and I'm ready to go. I'm in my vehicle, I'm ready to go if I need it. And again, if this is a gun that I'm using, then I know that I can use the same magazines as the Glock 22. Um, I don't have the pocket holster with me right now, but I also carry another gun on me. This is a Glock 43. Now, I kind of alternate between this Glock 43 and this Smith & Wesson 380. Um, the rounds really aren't that big of a difference. I know a lot of people say, well, why carry a 380? Um, the round is too little, you can't do nothing. Well, I don't agree with that. But anyways, so I kind of alternate back and forth kind of depending on what's going on. That one stays in my left cargo pocket. Now the reason for that, if I'm in a fight with somebody and at that point, if there's not a reason to pull my gun out, my gun is in the holster, if somebody starts pulling at my gun, trying to remove my gun from its holster, I'm going to try to do everything I can to keep that gun in that holster and keep them away from that gun. At this point, if they're reaching for my gun, that tells me really one thing, that they want to end my life or they want to end that fight with deadly force. So with that being said, I'm going to match that deadly force by reaching into my cargo pocket on my left hand side while locking in the gun on my right hand side, coming over and I now have a nine millimeter to kind of eliminate that threat. So 
I do carry two guns on me most of the time. It kind of depends on what I have going on. There's different reasons why I don't sometimes, but nine times out of 10, I do carry another gun in my pocket. So I have two guns on me at all times. Like I said, one on my strong side, one on my weak side. If something happens to my strong hand, if it gets injured, if it gets shot, whatever the case is, if something happens to this hand, I know that I can reach into my pocket on my weak side, pull a gun out, and I can still shoot. Maybe not as effective as my strong hand, but I at least still have the option to shoot as opposed to trying to come over with my left hand to my strong side and draw my duty weapon. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's a huge pain in the butt. So the next thing we're going to talk about, oh, and something I didn't point out, I know I talked about the light on this one, and I've talked about it in other videos, but this one also has a light. So like I said, if I do have to roll back to this gun, both of these guns have lights on them so that if I'm clearing a house or just nighttime because I do work overnight, I do have that option to have that light. I do have a different Glock 43 that has a light on it, but I don't put one on this just because I don't want extra weight or extra bulk in my pocket because I do carry that around with me all day. The next thing I carry in the back of my vehicle is an AR-15. Again, you'll notice this one has a light mounted to it. I did a video on this light. It's actually a very inexpensive light and it has been working amazingly um, for the application that I'm using it. So I carry this in the trunk of my vehicle I know you guys have seen videos and stuff like that of, of cops carrying ARs, and this is kind of the, the new norm of what everybody is going to, but I carry this AR-15 for the thing that nobody likes to talk about. If we have like an active shooter type situation, this is what I'm going with. I can carry way more rounds in this thing than I can with the shotgun, and I can reach out a lot farther with this thing than I can with the shotgun. So primarily, that's what this is for in my vehicle. I have this set up in the back. I have heavy vests in my vehicle, and I'll do a video on that. I want to do a uh, kind of what's in my patrol vehicle video, but that's what that you know is back there for. I do use that every once in a while to kind of clear houses and stuff like that. Again, situation kind of dictates what gun I get. All of these are tools. I get asked all the time, whether it's in videos or from other people, or even when I'm at work and people come up to me and they say, what's your favorite gun? Well. That's a very hard question to answer because it depends on what I'm doing with that gun. If I'm going out and I'm just shooting at the range and I'm just having fun, there's one gun that I like. If I'm on duty, of course, there's another gun that I'm using. If I'm hunting, there's another gun. Um, if I want to reach out long distance, that's a different gun. You know, there's, So there's different things that I do with different guns. So I don't necessarily have a favorite gun um, in general. It's just depending on what the situation is, then I have a favorite gun for that application. The next gun and the last one that I carry in my vehicle is up in the front with me. This is a Remington 870 pump action shotgun. I do have a saddle on there with extra rounds. There's a slug and there's some uh, buckshot on there. Again, this weapon is cleared. And if you notice, this one also has a light on it. Nothing too expensive, nothing too crazy, but it's functional, it works. These guns don't necessarily get thrown around a lot, but they're working guns. They do bounce around in my vehicles. I'm driving around a lot. Sometimes I drive a little bit crazy and these bounce around. So I don't want expensive, expensive gear to get, uh, excuse me, to get broken. So that's why I go with these. Now this is more of, since I am a city police officer, a lot of the houses that we go into are um, side by side. There's neighbors, things like that. So if I go in and I have to clear a house, Sometimes I feel more confident, most times I feel more confident with a shotgun because of penetration issues. If I go into a house, something happens, this thing has amazing stopping power, but it doesn't penetrate as much as the AR-15 does. So if I'm in an apartment complex, in a rural area, where I'm clearing a house, a building, whatever the case is, and I come upon a threat that I need to use you know, my shotgun for, I need to engage then that's what I want to use because, like I said, the penetration power isn't going to go as far. Now, it is going to go fairly far. I'm not saying that it's not going to go through a wall, maybe two, depending on what the wall is made out of. But I have a lot better odds of this thing stopping before that AR-15 does. That AR-15 is going to travel a lot farther um, in that building. So that's kind of what I carry. I know this video isn't too long, too crazy, but I get asked all the time, how many guns do you carry? Um, what kind of guns do you carry? Why do you carry this? Why do you carry that? And that's why, 
like I said, at a minimum, in my vehicle with me, I have five guns. Um, it just, that's how I work. That's how I function. If you guys have a better idea, if you have better reasoning, a better placement, whatever the case is, comment down below. I know a lot of you guys that watch these videos are officers yourselves. Um, and you guys give me great ideas and great information on why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? So that's what I do. That's how I operate. Five guns, my duty pistol, my backup pistol in my vehicle that accepts the same magazines, a pistol on my weak side, just in case my strong side is taken out, a rifle for long distance shooting, and then a shotgun for shorter in the room kind of compact areas without, you know, as much penetration. So that's what, that's what I have. That's what I carry. Kind of that's summed up for this video. I know it's very simple, very basic, but this is one of those questions that I get asked all the time. So I thought what a better way to answer it than uh, to do a quick little video on this. Next week's video, I'm going to be talking about a holster again. It's going to be the same holster that I've talked about here very recently. My Bravo Concealment Inside the Waistband DOS holster. I have an upgrade for that holster. Um, these are clips for that holster and the company that I got these from is called G-Code. So if you guys haven't heard of them, go and check them out. They got a lot of really cool stuff. They're not paying me to say this. I bought these things with my own money. Um, but I just thought this was a really cool idea, a really cool product. And I don't know if you guys can see the angle on this. This goes up and down here. And then the part that mounts to your holster is angled this way so that when it's on your holster, this is where your belt sits. And what it's doing is it's pushing the gun up against you and creating a small gap in between you and the gun. Um, so what that does is it helps hide the gun or whatever you're carrying. Obviously, you know, the gun, the magazines, that stuff, it, it, it keeps it from printing so much whenever you're carrying inside the waistband. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. I've never used those clips before. I'm going to be installing those clips and then we'll do some drawing with those. And I'll give you guys my initial thoughts on how I feel about if these G-Code clips actually work, and then I'll leave them linked down below so you guys can make your own opinion. So again, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one.